Hey everyone, it's started. The ban on foreign home buyers within the whole of Canada started on January the 1st. So we're here to basically break down some of the information on that, give you the details and basically what's gonna be the effect. Is it gonna actually impact the Canadian housing market? More specifically, is it going to affect Halifax and Nova Scotia? Well, we're here to find out and I'll give you absolutely my opinion on this one. So here we go, it started and effectively bars all commercial enterprises and individuals outside of Canada from buying residential properties here in Canada. This act was passed by Parliament back in June of last year, but it officially started on January 1st. It's gonna last for two years, all the way through to December 23. Competition within our housing markets basically has reached new levels over the last couple of years. Properties getting multiple offers and obviously buyers submitting agreements with few conditions getting more risk. And that was definitely the case in 2021, the first half of 2022. So although average, average home prices in Canada have dropped, the affordability is still a big concern. Now let's match that with anxiety over rising interest rates and people with variable rate mortgages are already paying more compared to earlier this year. Media is also jumping on that bandwagon and saying that people with fixed rate mortgages are now terrified of the rising interest rates. So as this foreign home buyer ban takes effect, here's what you need to know about those regulations. So first of all, what properties are actually included in this ban? According to the Act, a residential property includes detached homes or similar buildings, as well as semi-detached houses, row houses, residential condo units, and other similar premises. In English, basically every building with three units or less single family homes and condos is included. It also applies to residential properties that are in a census metropolitan area or agglomeration, says CMHC, but what on earth does that mean? Well, a census metropolitan area has a total population of at least 100,000 people with 50,000 people living at the core, while an agglomeration has a core population of at least 10,000 people. So that's gonna be hard to figure out. The regulations also apply to vacant land and any livable dwelling zoned for mixed or residential use. Houses in those core populations of less than 10,000 people are not according to the ban, nor are recreational properties, lakes, lake houses and cottages. Now, additionally, the law does not explicitly ban the purchase of large buildings with multiple units. So now some non-Canadians are specifically looking for second homes here in Nova Scotia and maybe income properties with four units or more, so this doesn't affect them. This is deliberately looking at single family homes and condos. So why is the ban in effect? Well, according to the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation, they want to make homes more affordable for those living in Canada by cracking down on this foreign investment. And we know that housing affordability is still a challenge across the whole of Canada. We're coming off highs in the middle of 2022, so prices have actually dropped a little bit, but it's still more than sometimes what buyers can see as affordable. By limiting the foreign investor amongst residential properties, Market watchers are expecting that ban's gonna create new opportunities for Canadians by opening up the supply. Really, really? I don't think so. The biggest issue here is still gonna be availability of housing and supply of housing across whole of the Canada. It's gonna be a knee-jerk reaction that looks like it's trying to solve a housing issue, but it's not really gonna work. Because here in Halifax, we get tons of immigrants who are coming here, and one of the things they wanna do is find a home, get the kids into a good school and start being part of the community that they're living in. But we've just gone and said, sorry, you're gonna to have to wait to buy a home. It's not very friendly or welcoming and it certainly doesn't feel like that's what we're reading in the ban. Now let's talk about the exemptions from the ban because there are some exemptions. So we're targeting non-Canadians here. There's definitely some exceptions to that rule. So those in Canada with temporary work permits are still allowed to buy residential properties. Same with refugees and international students who meet certain criteria. But here's the thing, if you're here on a temporary work permit, are you likely to buy a house? Depends on how temporary I guess that work permit is, but I think you'd just rent. And the ban does not apply to Canadian citizens or permanent residents, nor does it apply to non-Canadians who are looking to rent residential property in Canada. Non-Canadians who do have a spouse or a common law partner is Canadian, a citizen or a permanent resident are also exempt from the ban. Now, let's talk about what happens to people who are gonna break those rules. So if you break those rules, you're gonna get fined up to $10,000 and you may be required to sell a property that you've just purchased. 
People who can assist those non-Canadians can also be fined as well, i.e. realtors. So that is what the foreign buyers ban is all about. And if you've got any questions or comments, then stick them in the uh, details below and let's see how this pans out for the next two years. Because as far as I can see, it really isn't solving the core problem that we're gonna have here, which is non-Canadians are not actually making up a huge amount of the purchasing of single family homes across the whole of Canada, let alone here in Halifax or just in Nova Scotia. Now, yes, we can understand that, you know, potentially those foreign buyers can come in and buy up multi-unit buildings, fourplexes and big apartment buildings, but that's not what the single family home people are actually looking for anyway. So they're not taking away anything from that particular market. It's just, again, it's that knee jerk reaction to say, well, let's see that we're actually doing something here as a government to help the people who are trying to buy housing here in Halifax, Grant across the whole of Canada and let's exclude those non-residents uh, from buying anything. It's not really going to work. The real thing we need to do is we need more supply because Canada is looking to bring in something like a million and a half immigrants over the next three years. We need the housing. That's the key problem is we've got to supply more housing and at the moment we can't build the houses quick enough. So again, leave the comments if you got them down below, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and yeah, let's see how this plays out.